Mr Marty Roan, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dennis. How long has it been? Since? We saw each other. Oh, once. it probably would be at and least club 30, was it? 30 years, <laughs> I'd say, when we were both young things. We were young things. That's that's us. How are you enjoying King and I? And I'd love to hear from listeners who've seen Marty and the King and I, 96900 693. I'm loving it. It's uh, it's uh, second time round for me because I did it on uh, the West End with Yul Brynner yes. in the 1980 production of The King and I when I played The Young Lover. But sadly, Dennis, time has moved on and I can no longer play The Young Lover. Uh, I have to ask you, Yul Brynner, what was he like? Very generous professionally, very private socially. Um, you really never felt that you got to know him well. There was always that sort of uh, barrier, um, whether or not it was self-designed or whether it was just that the, the respect that everyone within the company gave him, you never really felt you got to know him. Although on stage or at rehearsal, he was extremely generous. Um, speaking of uh, superstars, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips now, because of uh, uh, an injury to Jason Scott Lee, um, out here and uh, what, what excitement to have oh, him here. Oh, fantastic. You know, a huge fan of the movie La Bamba and Young Guns, you know, with the uh, with the young clan, the young Rat Pack, as they, they sometimes refer to, you know, the Estevez brothers, otherwise known as Charlie Sheen. Yes, uh, amazing, and uh, he, he, was, he happened to be available to get out here and do it. He was, and the most amazing thing was he arrived Saturday morning and was on stage the following Wednesday doing, doing a, a performance. And Quite how, remarkable. How recently had he done it, or did he just do a quick brush-up on it? Uh, well, he'd done it, of course, in the 90s on Broadway, for which he was nominated for a Tony Award, and uh, then I think most recently it had been about four years ago in one of the American cities, I believe. So he said all he needed was a few runs and it all came back, all came flooding back to him. Well, it must have, because he only had four days to rehearse. That's amazing, because you, you, you know what it's like. If you haven't done something, you still remember denim and lace words, don't you? I do. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I won't test you. We haven't got a backing track. Um, also, over the years, I'm told that you've uh, you performed in front of Dustin Hoffman and Burt Reynolds. That was in the London production of ah, The King and I. Okay. That was that was uh, it was not unusual with Brynner in in the in the in the lead. It was not unusual for Hollywood superstars and royalty to be there virtually on a weekly basis. It was amazing. How exciting. It was. I got to meet Princess Margaret. At the time, she was dating Robbie Llewellyn, so they, the, the mind just didn't, didn't get her to stop for one second in front of the male cast. They just moved her along very quickly. Oh, did they now? Yeah. yeah things we're finding out today. Uh, your role in, in this, uh, this production, I'd love to, to, to let the listeners know exactly what it's... I play the Kralaholm, who's the Prime Minister, mm -hmm. who is the, uh, the person who has sort of set himself up to protect the King's best interests. And of course, when Anna Leo Nowens arrives in, uh, in Bangkok, he's none too pleased because he believes it's a, it's a backward step, even though the King wants um, Thailand to move forward. So through most of the production, I have some wonderful scenes with Lisa where I'm giving her a heck of a hard time. Um, and so you can't it's, do that to Lisa McCune. You, you, it's very difficult to give Lisa a hard time. But um, the the role itself is a full dramatic role. I don't sing a song in the production, which is quite ironic. Uh, the, does that go down well with Marty Ryan? I'm fine with it. I've been singing all my life, Dennis. So if I actually get to do a dramatic uh, acting role, I'm 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 pleased. I'm chuffed. Weren't you? I'm have to, to see if the memory's working. Weren't you involved <coughs> involved in promotion of? Boxing I knew you'd bring that things? up, Dennis. I, that was that was a nightmarish three years of oh, my life. Oh, I wish I hadn't now. <laughs> it was. It was extremely difficult. Um, I was looking after the infamous Waters brothers for oh, three right. years. I got caught up in all of that, <laughs> and uh, almost uh, it almost uh, destroyed my marriage. I almost lost my house. Um, it started off extremely well. I got them on sixty minutes. I got them in prime time television on nine before the football came along. Yep. Um, and then it all went pear-shaped. You could have just said, Dennis, shut your face. I don't want to answer that one. <laughs> I didn't want to be that rude to you, Dennis. I'm sorry it was such a bad time, but you're happy. You're smiling. <laughs> I am smiling, yes. Look, it's, it is great to see you. Um, you've been uh, such a part of people's lives for so long, and uh, um, this moving, moving towards theatre uh, in your career has been a, a very successful one well, for it's, you. Well, that's the irony. People forget, a lot of people forget that I started in the 70s in theatre. I did the original Sydney season of Godspell with John Waters and Peter Tapano. And then I went on to uh, La Mandragla with Pamela Stevenson. I did a review with John Waters and Rowena Wallace and Jackie Weaver. Mm -hmm. And then I got television series, Class of 75 and Number yeah. 96. And it was out of Class of 75 that Denim and Lace 
evolve because it was written into the script that I was this young student songwriter writing this song called Denim and Lace. And, of course, we released it to coincide with the episode and uh, it went straight to number one. But I was primarily an actor in, in, the, in the first half of the 70s. Then I had the temerity to have a number one hit record <laughs> and everything changed. Are there any other sh- shows that you'd love to be a part of? Because King and I, for mine, is, is one of those really feel-good musicals. Oh, it is. And, and it's, great it's, there's such a great atmosphere in, in the, in the, in the theatre and on stage. And, we, you know, everybody gets along so well because it is a happy show. It is, even though it has a, a fairly sad ending to it. It is a happy show. And, and everybody, they've, people have always said, work on The King and I, it'll be one of the most memorable experiences of your life. Well, I've had the opportunity to do it twice. But I'm, I'm loving getting back into this acting. I've just done a feature film with uh, Martin Sachs and I'm doing a television series, a uh, six-part television series. We start filming in January. It's a tough gig, though, isn't it? Uh, well, acting... People see... You, yeah, no, but it's just the, the continuity of work is difficult. Absolutely. absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why when I came back from the United Kingdom, I went back into singing because it was an easier flow to get back into the industry here. Acting is, is very risky, and, and a lot of people sacrifice a lot in acting, and you can have one great year, as, as you know, and then you can have a year where you do absolutely nothing. So you've just got to hope that the wheels keep turning. Marty Roan, great to see you. Good luck uh, with the rest of the season of King and I. You can book a Ticketmaster on uh, uh, Ticketmaster, the King and I on at the Princess Theatre. And uh, good luck in the future. Thank you very much.